I'm Swap Nora Boyd. Sorry. I now live in uh, Morecambe, um, where I retired to, and I'm uh, 85 years old. Okay, so. Living over the shop, being with my paternal um, grandmother a lot, because both my parents were in the shop, plus staff. Um, going out every Sunday to collect eggs from the Garstang area, bring them back to Manchester. Uh, also tasting cheese at different farmhouses, which was a delight. It was the only bit of fresh air my mother got was walking along the road. My father would go around to these places collecting the eggs. Um, sometimes we'd go on to Glass and Dock. Um, sometimes on a rare, a rare occasion going to Morecambe. Um, they were happy days. Um, I was um, expected to help in the shop when they were having the tea or fill up shelves, which I did without questioning. It was my paternal uh, grandfather and my grandmother that were in the, the start of the business. They had two shops. My father eventually inherited the smaller one and his uh, elder brother had the one with the bakehouse, which was a larger one. They had different kind of wives. My mother was a businesswoman and uh, thought more of the shop than me. I think my father did as well, really. Shop always came first, which is quite right, rightly. Um, that put the butter on the bread, I suppose, and jam, for that matter. One of the girls in the shop used to wash my hair and put me to bed, and that was my mother. Didn't see much of my mother at all, really, even though she was in the shop all the time. Green grocery, with my father used to go into Smithfield Market, into Manchester, and um, buy the, the green grocery, which later on, I used to go down during the war years in the pony and trap and bring the groceries, the green grocery back up to the shop. There was also bakery delivered, hot cross buns and Easter time, and uh, we had the bread delivered every morning from the bigger, like Mother's Pride and um, Warburton's. Um, then there was a, a man came round with crumpets and uh, potato cakes once a week that his wife used to make and we used to sell for him. And then we would go around collecting order books, which we went round to new houses, collected these little red books that were high class grocers and Italian warehouse uh, written on it and uh, deliver, collect books one day and uh, deliver, say, two days afterwards. I managed to get one week's holiday a year. My father wouldn't give me any more than one week, which I would spend usually climbing mountains either in the Lake District or Wales or Scotland, the case may be. But you couldn't do very much with just one week, mm -hmm. but that was all that the, he allowed me to have. It was very difficult getting staff during the war years, too. We used to roast our own hams and um, had tongs as well, tin tong, and corned beef and bacon, sides of bacon, and we would go down and choose our own bacon at the warehouses in Manchester. Also cheeses from um, different uh, sources. Um, a very good one was delivered to us. It was um, made up in the Garstang area, which was Lancashire cheese. Um, that people used to come all from round about, uh, especially for it. Business. Not really, because my mother was um, tired of keep training people in the grocery trade and, and they were either going down the mines or they went in the forces and she had to train somebody else. So with me, of course, it was permanent. Um, there was no petrol, of course, so it was limited, uh, which um, made delivery difficult. Um, things were under the counter, it was difficult trying to be fair and uh, you were limited with supplies and there were ration books so people were um, given a healthy diet and uh, there was a very nice um, atmosphere with people, everybody helped everybody. The men in the forces um, brought their ration emergency cards to us. My father always made sure they got one egg which they weren't necessarily entitled to, but uh, he made sure they got one. Um, the, we could no longer go and collect eggs because it went to a central packing station 
and uh, they were just delivered uh, in cases, the eggs which were massive cardboard cases, but um, everything was centralised. So lots of these places um, just didn't exist anymore. To school one night a week, and I had night school, um, which I took um, grocery exams. That was in Manchester. Mm -hmm. um, there were just two girls on the course, the rest were boys. Went to have our um, practical in London, and a written in London. Mm -hmm. Judging sides of bacon and uh, different kind of coffee beans, where they came from. And uh, tasting things, like different kind of cheeses, and quite to know all about spices, and mm -hmm. the original places. All these things that are just no longer applying now, you know. It wasn't a matter of sitting there and things going through a checkout. Uh, you just never sat down. It was quite a nice area, big Jewish area. We had the workers behind the shop in the council estate on the behind the shop, which is on the left hand side going into Manchester. And on the right hand side were Ringy Road and the um, specialists and doctors and solicitors lived. So we had a very mixed trade, um, which was rather nice really, because you got one lot buying ribs and the other lot, others buying strawberries and fresh asparagus. So <laughs> it was very mixed. Mm. Well, well after the war, of course, just um, where we were rationed for a long time. And then um, the supermarket started to appear. Quick say which we survived from, it didn't make a lot of difference. Um, as to which was in Radcliffe, that still didn't make too much difference. And then Sainsbury's came and it took a lot of the Jewish trade. And I had a big Passover trade uh, with the Jews, um, which was always my job to go and get this Passover thing. So gradually, um, it, it declined and we came more of a shop where people came and just forgotten things and uh, we lost a lot of our order trade. So by the time my two children were getting ready to leave school, um, grocery um, had lost its meaning really. Eventually a Pakistani man bought it, came in with a bag full of pound notes and uh, with a seek and uh, by this time my mother and father had left the shop and it was just myself and my husband because he came into it when he, we got married um, and this Sikh and um, the Pakistani man and they just talked to my husband which annoyed me because I was brought up in the grocery train they didn't want to do with me because I was a woman I think. Um, we survived three generations and it was bound to come with the way that the world was changing. Mm -hmm. Um, now you're just a number when you go to a supermarket, but of course you do all the work yourself, the customer does all the work. Whereas we did all the work before, 